Hello, folks. Thank you for tuning in to episode three of the Weird Freaky Brain Science of Drugs. My name is Colt, and I work at Sandstone Care. So, for those of you that have been following along so far, you remember in episode one, we learned the three ways in which all drugs are similar. There are three traits that all drugs share. One, to get into the brain has to dress up as a natural neurotransmitter, one you were born with. Two, once it gets into the brain, runs the risk of our factory shutting down, which is the risk of withdrawal. And three, runs the risk of ice on the receptors, which is the risk of tolerance, right? Today's episode is about endorphins. So endorphins are the brain's natural painkillers. So, if I leave this video today and I get my foot chopped off, my brain's going to give me a giant surge of endorphins so that maybe I can withstand this pain long enough to go seek treatment. Endorphins are the brain's natural painkillers. Knowing this, what drugs do you think dress up as endorphins? Opioids. Opioids is a tremendous family of drugs, right? We can talk about cannabis and talk about THC, or we can talk about alcohol and talk about GABA, and we can talk about how specific drugs are dressing up as specific neurotransmitters, but this is a giant family of drugs. There are so many different drugs that fall under this category, right? So if we're talking about opioids, we are talking about prescription, narcotic, painkillers. Things like hydrocodone, Lortab, Vicodin, Oxycontin, Oxycodone, Percocet, Dilaudid, Morphine, Demerol, Fentanyl, and things like opium and heroin. I'm not talking about Aleve or Tylenol, <laughs> right? Opioids are dressing up as endorphins. So, if someone's using an opioid, that opioid is crossing the blood-brain barrier, dressing up as an endorphin. It floods the gap, which means that the endorphins workers and the endorphins factories see that flood in the street. And now we're running the risk of our endorphins factories shutting down. And if our endorphins factories are shutting down and we're not getting real or not getting fake endorphins, it means that the natural pain of being a person is going unchecked and going untreated. If you picture, if you close your eyes for a moment, you picture in your mind's eye what a person in opioid detox looks like, you're probably picturing things like chills and shakes and sweating and intense, indescribable pain. The natural pain of being a person when going untreated, that means that everything shows up as pain. I've heard people in opioid withdrawal describe what it feels like, and they say things like, feels like their bones are on fire and their skin is freezing, or that the act of giving someone a hug feels like their ribs are shattering, and they describe it as some of the most disgusting and intense pain that they've ever walked through. And if endorphins factories are shutting down and there's nothing to treat the natural pain of being a person, that makes sense to me. There's something really specific inside of here that I need to talk about also. This is one of the most important conversations that we can have. Naloxone. Naloxone is also known by the brand name of Narcan. But naloxone is the opioid overdose reversal medication, right? When opioids are plugging in to the endorphins receptors, it does a really good job of treating that pain, that physical pain, right? The difficult part about it, too, is that these are the same receptors that help us recognize emotional and spiritual pain also, not just physical pain. And these are also the receptors that help tell our lungs to breathe. So if these are getting 
clogged up for too long and too strong, it means that a person's breathing response slows down, which means that their breathing slows down. And if the breathing slows down enough, it means that they lose consciousness and that their breathing stops. And that's how an opioid overdose has the chance of being fatal. There never, ever needs to be another opioid overdose because the antidote is here. This stuff scoops the, the opioid off of the receptor and plugs itself in there with a small little hallway in it so that <gasps> this person now has a chance to breathe again. And I'm sure that you understand that if a person is breathing, they have a chance to seek recovery. If a person's not breathing, they don't. And if we can keep people breathing, we have the chance of helping more people than people that aren't breathing. I believe this is one of the most important conversations that we can have. In many states, you can access this stuff without a prescription. I encourage you to walk into your local pharmacy or call your pharmacist and say, do you carry naloxone? And if they do, get your hands on some. I think this is really important because if I went home tonight and I overdose on opioids, it wouldn't matter if I had naloxone in my pocket or not. I would be unresponsive and I wouldn't be able to use it. Carrying naloxone in your pocket or your purse or your backpack is not about saving your life. It's about saving anyone else's life. If you have the chance, call your pharmacy, access naloxone, get yourself trained up on how to use it. It's fairly simple. I'm grateful for your time today, folks.